What's up you guys, Shardimus Prime here, doing another Marvel Legends action figure review on actually two figures. We are looking at Cloak and Dagger from the Spider Build-A-Figure. If you're trying to pick up the set, you can order it at Big, Big, Big. Get your big badass toys at BigBadToyStore.com. Click the link in the description below. And I gotta give a big thanks to Xmanny87 for leading me on to get these figures a little bit early. Thank you so much. Follow his Instagram, link in the description below. Definitely worth the follow. And you can see we get cloak on the left and dagger on the right and then on the side we get this nice image of the pair right there looking really good and then on the back you can see the same product shot on both of them and then you can see there's a different read up right here for cloak if you want to read it go ahead and pause it now then there's a different read up for dagger if you want to read it go ahead and pause it now and then there's all the other figures from the wave then we get that nice image once again of cloak and dagger and then I really like this cloak and dagger logo that we're seeing on the top of the packaging spot varnished right there I think that looks pretty nifty a little dagger right there and everything there's not much going on at the bottom so let's get to it and crack these things open. And here's Cloak and Dagger out of the packaging and both really good looking figures. I've really been looking forward to these. We've never received a Cloak and Dagger figure set from Hasbro or Toy Biz. So this is the first time that we're getting Cloak and Dagger from Marvel Legends. And I think they delivered. I don't know. I have some gripes here and there. Yeah, uh, I'm going to mention my gripes. But I am very pleased. I mean, just those head sculpts alone look magnificent. So let's get a closer look at the accessories that come with dagger and then we'll get a closer look at these figures so here's the daggers that come with the dagger figure and they look pretty cool I smell a gambit coming by the way you know just looking at this they could kind of reuse this for gambit I guess they'd have to reshape these though because they don't look like playing cards you get a little extra plastic right there but I do like this pearlescent shimmer that we're getting there's like this light translucent look to this plastic it's kind of hard to pinpoint maybe if I brighten things up no that's not helping at all whatsoever but yeah it does have this nice shimmer to them and you get this little clip right over there for the wrist it's a little tricky figuring out exactly how this works you know like the physics of these you know coming away from her hand you know you could do something like that that looks pretty good yeah actually that's fairly solid well, what's wrong with that now to very briefly get into the history of cloak and dagger uh, dagger aka tandy brown originally from ohio moved to new york city and cloak ty johnson originally from massachusetts also ran away to new york city as a teenager and that's where they had met each other. Uh, both of these teenagers ended up getting experimented on, thus that's how they got their powers. Uh, Cloak has the ability to teleport, he has intangibility powers, and he can link to the dark force dimension. And then Dagger can create light daggers, uh, she can purge addictions, and she can heal with her daggers. At one point I thought she could fly, but she can't fly. She's just mostly just jumping out of Cloak's cloak, which I think is really cool. And I should mention that they have a romantic relationship too. Uh, Dagger has a very spoiled upbringing and Ty uh, has a much more difficult upbringing, so it's kind of like an opposite attract kind of thing, which I think is cool. And this duo is mostly a street level superhero team, you know, that they mostly uh, like fight, you know, a lot of gang members and junkies and stuff like that, from what I remember just off the top of my head. But looking at this head sculpt, I absolutely love it, man. I'm glad they didn't go with the short hair version of Dagger. I like this version a whole lot more. I like how the face looks unique compared to other head sculpts, in my opinion, anyway. She doesn't look like another. Uh, figure in cosplay. A little knot right there on the right side, but I do like how we get color variation in the hair. And I think the deco on the right side of her face looks great. I'm very pleased with that, as well as the shimmer right there for the lipstick. The eye placement, that looks really good for the eye paint and everything. She does have dark eyebrows. I hate seeing blondes with really dark eyebrows, but nah, whatever. Still looks really good. I'm looking on this side, it does look a little better on the other, or then that other side anyway. Then right over there, it looks pretty good as well. I'm looking at the rest of her suit, uh, I do like it. <laughs> I, I like the body mold choice for this, but they had to really rise up these little cuts in her suit right there. And I would have preferred, you know, them to be a little bit lower. I always thought this was a really sexy outfit, but you know, they, they have to make it rated G, I guess. You know, hike that all the way up there away from the cleavage. I like the cleavage. I thought this was a really sexy design too. You know. They have some really really clever designs back in the day but can't use them all now because 
because you know it's 2018 and people get, get mad. But anyway, looking at the left hand right there, you can see yeah, a little bit of paint coming off just by the slightest bit. But she has wide open hands, which are very appropriate. You can see they use the white hinge. A little bit of warping on this side, but not too bad. I could you know heat that up and straighten that out. And then you can see the flesh tone right there. Uh, you can see this weird yellowing happening around her belly button. Uh, I guess that's just the flesh tone and the white kind of mixing together right there. So that's a little bit of a gripe of mine. She has a little bit of smudging going on right there at the hip, but yeah. They're using that a lot more these days. And I have a thing for feet, and luckily I have a thing for left feet because this figure comes with the two left feet right here. So. I don't really have a preference towards uh, which foot, but yeah, that, that's a bummer. So I have two left feet on my figure. That sucks. So I don't know. I'll try to swap this out later on, but you know, eh, so far it hasn't made me hate the figure at all. So we're basically getting the same articulation that we got on the Cape Bishop Hawkeye figure. I believe this upper torso is different from Cape Bishop, but everything else except for the left hand is the same and the head, of course. Anyway, uh, with the hair and everything, you can get her looking up that far, which is really good. I, I like that. We get the hinge right in there and you can make her look downward. You get side to side motion and a little bit of head pivoting shoulders move outward that far they move down you could rotate 360 we get a single jointed elbow that just meets 90 degrees and both hands rotate side to side and hinge up and down we get a diaphragm joint that turns side to side a little diaphragm pivot crunches forward a little bit back a little bit and then we also get hip joints that move outward and she'll kick forward that much and back that much and she has an upper thigh cut double jointed knee this left foot moves down up and has ankle pivot just like this left foot so here's looking at the cloak head sculpt and I love this head sculpt as well. Hasbro's really been stepping up their game with the head sculpts in general. I really like this. I like the facial hair. I like the facial expression. Kind of has a disgruntled look right there. I like how the eyes are all whited out. The facial hair looks really good. They added some extra black around the side of his face right here to make it look like he's kind of coming out of the cloak and everything. That is neat. And I really like how the cloak looks on this guy too. It looks really good. We get this translucent plastic going on right here with these stripes. I think that's really neat and they're all sculpted on there. Nice wrinkles. I think that looks really nice, man. Very pleased with that. I'm gonna have to zoom out so you can see this. We get a little bit more silver right here. I like how it just you know swings around. And you can see how it's a little bit translucent right there for these darker stripes. So that's pretty neat. That's kind of a nifty thing to have right here, especially because he's supposed to kind of drift through dimensions and everything. So that is really cool. It's, nah, the material is a bit on the stiff side, you know, but not too bad. I really like how it lays right there on the ground. That's really cool how they did that. That is pretty awesome. Then the body for this, and you can just untab this right here to remove this. Uh, the body for this guy is the uh, the Grim Reaper body mold, and it looks pretty good. You know, it's just all black. They gave him these new hands, and he has these translucent fingers right there, so you can see it's kind of just disappearing. So that's pretty nifty, but there's not a whole lot to really discuss with this body mold. We've seen it many, many times before in the past. You can see he has the peg holes underneath his feet right there. Then there's the back of the figure, so yeah, I'm mostly going to use the whole cloak feature. Now before getting into the articulation for cloak, I just want to show some display options. You can pop off the head right here, I remove the body completely, and then re-tab this, and then just set that down, and then just plop the head on there. I think that is a pretty cool setup, I like that. I also like taking this off, and then if you point your fingers right into the corners right here, and then flip this inside out, uh, you can get something going where he's kind of, you know, using his cloak powers and kind of, you know, drifting away or something like that. It works better in a darker setting, you know, but you still get those translucent parts right there. So I thought that was pretty nifty that you could do that. You know, there's options. Uh, as far as articulating the figure or, mo or posing the figure around with the cloak on, I mean, you're not going to be able to do a whole ton of stuff, man. Like earlier in the video, you could see I got the right hand creeping outward, you know, with the, you know, with his hand around his girl's waist and everything, but you can't really do a whole lot as far as posing the figure underneath this you know this whole cloak and everything but otherwise uh, you can get the head moving up that much down that much side to side motion shoulders move outward that far down that much rotate 360 bicep swivel double jointed elbows both wrists turn side to side and hinge up and down ab crunch forward back waist swivel hips move outward you can kick forward not back so much upper thigh cut double jointed knees boot rotate or calf rotation ankles move down they move up and he does have 
ankle pivot. Now to measure out these cloak and dagger figures, you can see that cloak is standing just under seven inches tall, and it looks like dagger is standing right at six inches tall. And then for your cloak and dagger action figure comparison, you can see the Marvel Legends versions right here next to the Diamond Select Toys Marvel Select Cloak and Dagger. Now this cloak figure is not really a figure, it's more of an accessory to the dagger figure, so he has no body or anything, which is fine, because you know most of the time, you know, daggers popping out of there, you know, shooting a bunch of daggers and stuff like that. But yeah, you can see the size difference between these two, and you can see the cuts on the cleavage on the Diamond Select figure is a lot lower, you know, on the chichas right there. I like how that looks a whole lot more, but I do like the face sculpt on the newer figure more than this one. I don't know. This is good for the time and everything. I also like how they have a little bit of the blue fading in and out and everything right there. That's pretty cool too, but still, I like these new Marvel Legends. And then here's Cloak and Dagger next to the Kate Bishop Hawkeye figure, and you can see that the Dagger and Kate Bishop Hawkeye have the same bodies, except for the upper torso right there. You can see that they are a little bit different. And then here's Cloak and Dagger next to your average six inch scale figure. We have the Marvel Legends Big Time Letdown Spider-Man. What's so interesting about this guy? All he does is have a fancy cape. I got a fancy cape. Check it out. See? Ooh, isn't it a nice fancy cape, right? Come over this way, baby. Whoa! So I'd like to thank you guys for watching my video, especially those of you guys that watch my videos all the way from the very beginning to the end. It really helps out this YouTube channel as well as when you hit that like button if you like the video. And please leave a comment down below letting me know what you think of these figures and let me know what you think of the review. And please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell if you have not already. And I like both of these figures. I gotta say I'm very pleased with them. I have gripes, you know, and I feel like they're going for a younger look for the dagger and cloak figures. So, you know, the whole thing with the cleavage, eh, it doesn't bother me that much if they have that in mind, you know what I mean? It makes a little bit more sense to me. And I think they're both really good pieces. I'm very happy with the head sculpts. I love that I can play around with the cloak from Cloak. You know, I could do setups like the one you're looking at right now, and it makes me very happy. So, I gotta say, I'm very stoked with both of these figures, and I gotta give them a sud rating of... I love it! I guess that's partly in due to the anticipation of these figures, too. You know, we have never had Marvel Legends Cloak and Dagger figures. So to finally get them in hand and for me to be happy with them, I'm especially stoked, man. So again, I'd like to know what you think. Please go ahead and leave a comment down below. And also, what do you think of the paired reviews? I mean, these figures are sold separately. And there's a lot of Marvel Legends coming out at once, and you guys have recommended to me to review two figures at a time. So I'm thinking of doing the same thing with the Elektra and Daredevil figure, and I'm thinking of also reviewing the Scarlet Spider Kane figure along with the House of M Spider-Man figure in one review. Doc Ock would be his own review, you know what I mean? So I don't know, let me know what you think of the paired reviews in the comment section below. If you'd like to see a photo gallery of images, it's over at MarvelousNews.com and ShardimusPrime.net. And don't forget to follow me on the Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Links to everything I talked about in the description below. I'll catch you guys later. Peace! I'm sure I'm prime videos. Hey, you should click one. Yeah, click on one of them. Or subscribe if you haven't.